Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're going to be mostly talking about those very severe storms that we're expecting for the deep south and portions of the south central United States. But we're also going to be talking a little bit about those temperatures as we're expecting a very large cool down later this month. Now for today's comment of the day, I want to know... When do you think our next severe weather event is going to be? Let me know in the comments down below, and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Let's get straight into this video. First things first, we're taking a look at yesterday's uh, storm reports here. And as you can see, we had 37 hail reports, 10 wind damage reports, and then also two tornado reports. One of those actually was a report of damaged homes. I haven't hopped on any social media that yet this morning, so I'm curious to see how strong that tornado actually was. I'm going to look into that a little bit later on. Uh, but obviously, that's just a very devastating report to hear out of there. For our day one categorical outlook, we have upgraded to a moderate risk. So far, this this severe weather season has been very intense. Two high risk days. I think this is the second moderate risk day. So we've seen a lot of activity so far. Uh, and as you can see, we're going to have a very large area of general thunderstorms throughout a lot of the eastern United States, a lot of the Ohio Valley, even up through the Great Lakes. That marginal risk there in the darker green regions is where we expect some isolated severe weather to be possible or just some very strong storms in general. It's that slight risk region where it begins to get a lot more widespread. So for Georgia, Alabama, Tennessee, Arkansas, Missouri, Oklahoma, Texas, Louisiana. So you just kind of take it around town. Uh, we have an enhanced risk there in the orange that's going to be for eastern Oklahoma, eastern Texas. We see a lot of Louisiana, Arkansas, even Mississippi and Alabama as well in there. And then our moderate risk, which is almost in the same exact regions where we've seen most of those high risks located, or all of them actually, there in the deep south. We've seen the Dixie Alley just really take over this uh, severe weather season this year. In the moderate risk, we expect widespread severe weather to be likely. Uh, and as we take a look at the individual outlooks, this is mostly for damaging wind. We expect a linear storm mode. We're going to talk about that later on as we take a look at the simulated radar a little bit later on. But this wind damage is the biggest threat with that. So we're taking a look at a 5% chance of damaging wind within 25 miles of a given location there in the green shades. A 15% chance there in the yellow. A 30% chance there in the red. And then a 45% chance there in the pink that's going to be basically a 50-50 chance within 25 miles of a given location of seeing damaging wind, which is, you know, not very good odds for sure. We see that hatched area there within the red and pinks. That is where we're expecting significant damaging wind to be possible uh, throughout the day and night tonight, mostly the night tonight, actually. So I'll be talking a little bit about that as we take a look at the simulated radar later on. For that day one hail outlook, you can see it's a little bit less of a hail day. We see 5% chance there in the green, a 15% chance there in the yellow, and then we have a red area, the 30% chance there for Louisiana, Arkansas, Oklahoma, and Texas, so mostly on the western end there. And we do have a significant hatched region there as well, indicating that there is a possibility for 2-inch diameter hail or more within that region. Mostly a wind day, but on the western end there will be a bit of a, a hail risk as well for sure, and then a very slight hail risk for most regions. Now what we're going to do is we're going to move on and we're going to talk about that tornado threat in just a moment. Alright, so here we are taking a look at that tornado outlook and as you can see there's a 2% chance within 25 miles of a given location of tornadoes in two separate regions. One there for Virginia and North Carolina and then the other is in our moderate risk region there for Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Tennessee, Mississippi, Alabama, and Louisiana as well. Then we have a 5% chance there in the brown for Oklahoma, Texas, Arkansas, Louisiana, Mississippi, and Alabama. And then a 10% chance for most of that moderate risk region there for Arkansas, Louisiana, and Mississippi. So as you can see, this is actually not expected to be a, a huge tornado day. We're not really expecting supercells as much as we're expecting a linear storm mode. So typically, there is a chance of tornadoes, and we will likely see a tornado or two or maybe more. Uh, but we're not expecting, you know... 50 plus tornadoes today or even 20 plus tornadoes today that would be very surprising if we saw that amount you're still going to want to pay attention but we are not expecting a tornado outbreak by any means throughout the day today there is a little bit of an elevated chance there for sure though regardless of that tornado risk i highly recommend you have a NOAA radio handy we have one of those available in the link down below i always recommend somebody have those handy obviously uh, and you're just going to want to pay attention to those warnings that are going on i mean it's going to be overnight so a NOAA radio is going to be the best way to go uh, but really, really, uh, you're going to want to pay attention because tornadoes are possible basically in any thunderstorm. 
uh, it happens. Odd things happen. So you're going to want to pay close attention because there is a chance today. For those temperatures for today, we're going to get right into the model guidance. We're going to be in the mid to upper 70s for most of these severe weather regions. Upper 60s in some spots, but mostly 70s. The dew points are going to be in the lower 70s, upper 60s. So looking very uh, sufficient there. And the cape, this is going to be the highest cape event so far we've had this year. Very out of control with this cape. We have widespread 4,000 plus cape for those purple regions. Uh, and then those white regions is where we're approaching 5,000. We have uh, some spots over 5,000. Our maximum here is 5,275. And that's going to be in Texas there where you can see those whites and grays showing up. Very elevated areas of cape. Uh, widespread uh, 3,000 plus there in the reds. You can see pretty much 3,000 throughout Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Arkansas, Tennessee, and even up in through Missouri. So this is what we call CAPE or convective available potential energy. And this is really what thunderstorms use to grow further and intensify further. Uh, it's like thunderstorm food. So when you have this much CAPE available, you expect very intense storms to be very possible. Our shear is going to be actually quite sufficient. We have about 60 to 100 showing up here, a maximum of 93, uh, which is going to be on the higher end of things for sure. Now, what we're going to do in a moment is take a look at that simulated radar and just walk you through that because we want to take a look at what storm mode we can expect uh, mostly with this and, and the timing of everything as well. Now, I wanted to let you know I did make a Patreon post today about the extended range of severe weather talking about next week. Some of the severe weather we expect in the longer, medium to longer range uh, I talked about on that Patreon post. I went very in-depth. That's as of this morning. So if you aren't a part of that Patreon, you should do so. You can become a patron for a very low price of $3 uh, and, and join that today and get access to those very in-depth posts. I highly recommend you do so. We're going to be talking about that extended range of severe weather over there. Now, by about 2 p.m. today, you can see there is some showers and thunderstorms around, but this is not necessarily our severe weather at this point. Uh, we're going to have to move towards about 7 p.m. to see some of those thunderstorms really getting underway here. Uh, and they're going to be all over the place. And really, this is pretty much why I think we didn't have a high risk today. M mostly also because we don't have a very high-end parameters for tornado or any other threat. It's basically just a wind threat today. Uh, I think that's why we stuck at a moderate. There's some storms in the area that are going to begin to eat up that potential ahead of all the severe weather. But you can see that there is some cells scattered around throughout all of those severe weather regions. Our significant tornado parameter is actually going to be quite high. Uh, we see a 13.53 uh, as the maximum here, and that's going to be in Texas somewhere, but we do see those pinks widespread. Same story by the time we're reaching about 10 p.m. here. Uh, we see pinks all over the place with a 19.49 as the maximum, uh, and then we begin to lower by the time we're reaching about maybe 3 a.m. here. We see a 13.68, and then eventually an 8.55 by the time we're reaching about 7 a.m. tomorrow. So this is going to be a very overnight event, if you ask me. We're going to be taking a look at this severe weather lasting straight through the night, straight into the day tomorrow, not really fizzling out at any point. Now, by the time we're reaching 12 a.m., we're just getting underway here. We see that line developing there for Arkansas, Oklahoma, Texas. Uh, and that line gets more severe by the time we're taking a look at about 3 a.m. So this is when we're mostly heading into the moderate risk regions, Arkansas, Louisiana, uh, Mississippi. And this is why I haven't said anything about going live, because this is going to be mostly underway in the middle of the night. Um, and I don't know if I'll be alive any point today. I might go live tonight just to talk about it, but I'm not going to be live at 3 or 4 or 5 a.m. You guys would be pretty much hearing a very sluggish zombie version of me. It wouldn't be very fun or very pretty, uh, so that's probably not going to happen. But I might go live tonight later this evening and just talk about the upcoming severe weather event a little bit more in depth and taking a look at the current conditions with you guys. So be on the lookout for that this evening. Uh, by the time we're taking a look at about 7 a.m., you can see these storms are still underway here. Mississippi, Louisiana, Alabama, These are this is still a lot of our moderate risk regions. So between 3 and 7 a.m., I think, is the biggest risk for severe weather tonight. So... I mean, that's mostly when that moderate risk is being, uh, you know, verifying at this point. Now, for the day two severe weather risk, we do have a day two severe weather risk. We are going to have a slight risk of severe weather for similar regions. I do expect that there will be an enhanced risk upgrade here for some of these spots. This is just going to be a continuation throughout the morning tomorrow into the afternoon of those same severe storms, mostly a wind risk again. Let's go over those individual risks real quick. 
Uh, the wind risk, we do have a 5% chance within 25 miles of a given location there in the greens, and then 15% chance there in the yellow, with a hatch risk there for Louisiana, southern Mississippi, southern Alabama, and, so and the panhandle of Florida there as well. And then we have a 15% chance there for hail in that yellow region, and a 5% chance there in the green. Tornado risk, we have a 2% chance here in the green, and then a 5% chance there in the brown. So we will see a continuation of that severe weather throughout the day tomorrow. Anyway... For today's confidence tab, we are at a 5 out of 6. We're feeling very confident in this. Obviously, we've talked about only things that are in the very short range happening tomorrow and today. So we're at a very, very high confidence at this point. Anyway, for today's comment of the day, I asked you guys, how do you think the rest of April is going to go? And Luke Fistler said, April will be slightly above average for the eastern U.S. with cooler than normal temperatures arriving in the latter half of the month. And that certainly appears to be the case we're going to see a big warm pattern for the next few days, the next little while, and then cold temperatures eventually as we're reaching the second half of the month. It's going to be very interesting to see how this month plays out overall because it looks like it's going to be all over the place. Anyway, for today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our platinum patrons, Property Damage, John Benbenek, James Wade, Dovey Nagel, Alan Palomo, Adam S., Larry the Pan, Donna Carnes, Cameron Marshall, and Ada Mattis. Alongside our Diamond Patrons, Bill Roberts, Alan Cherry, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, Michael Cotalesa, Michael Buell, Cat Bite, Charles Stinnett, Kellen Manhart, It's Jay, Cindy Klein, Mark J, Luke Vallego, Garys, and John Quilisi. If you would like to be a part of that patron end screen of the day, you can do so by joining our very exciting Patreon page, gaining access to that post that we posted today, like I said, uh, and just other exciting things over there. So I hope to see you guys over there on that, you know, Patreon page for today's, for today's channel membership of the day. I want to thank all of our channel members. But especially our Weather Top Dog, Hair Farms 1, and then our super fan, Phoenix Nimitz. You can join our, obviously, our channel membership as well here by clicking that button next to that subscribe button. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to destroy the like button. Be sure to comment to help that algorithm out. Be sure to subscribe if you like weather-related content, and I will see you guys in the next video.